I did a series of interviews with Shelby, and uh, uh, he was amazingly generous. And uh, he said at one point, he said, if you're looking for a story, he said, uh, you know, if you're looking for a story, uh, you, you, I do declare, you need to find yourself a battle. Uh, he said, a battle, a battle has its own kind of natural beginning, middle, and end. It has its own compression of geography and, and of chronology. Uh, and obviously, you know, it has conflict. Uh, it has... Uh, amazing characters, both the, both the generals and, and the kind of the grunts who emerge as the heroes often of a story of a battle. And, uh, you know, it just kind of has this kind of perfect narrative arc. Uh, for him, that battle was Shiloh. That's how he got his start in the whole Civil War thing. Ended up spending, what, 30 years working on the whole war. But so I filed that away and I was thinking, I'm, you know, I'm going to find a battle. One day I will do a battle book. Um, I'm not particularly a military historian. I'm not particularly into war, or I don't particularly come from a war family uh, or military family. Uh, but I, I just thought, you know, there's something just in a strict literary sense that's, that's right about that. I'm going to find a battle one day. Then in 2001, uh, I was doing a, uh, a book tour for my, for my story, uh, Ghost Soldiers, which is somewhat a, a military book, but it's not a battle book. It's not about a single battle. And uh, while I was on tour, I think I was in Washington, um, I was signing books, and this gentleman came up to me, uh, and he asked me to sign the book, and you know, he said, the Baton Death March, that's very interesting. Uh, you know, those guys were a bunch of wimps, though. Uh, yeah, right, the Baton Death March were <laughs> wimps. Um, that got my attention. And then he said, uh, but you know what you should write? He said, uh, you should write about the reservoir. And he put this card down in front of me uh, that said, The Chosen Few, which is the name of these veterans of this battle, The Chosen Reservoir. And then I, I noticed that he was missing several fingertips on one of his hands, uh, which he said was from frostbite from this battle, which was fought in negative 35 degree weather. And uh, well, that got my attention too. And uh, started, uh, I, I'm embarrassed to say, I had never heard of it. I had never heard, like I think a lot of Americans, I had never heard of hardly any of the battles of the Korean War. And um, I, I um, you know, it was deplorable, I think, how little I knew about um, Korea outside of, you know, endless um, episodes of MASH. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so um, I, I started reading about this battle and started to realize very quickly that it was one of the most harrowing battles in American history. Uh, it had a lot of kind of classical qualities, like something out of Thucydides or Herodotus. Uh, these, this, this army marches up into the mountains and is completely surrounded by an enemy, 10 to 1 uh, numerical, su numerically superior enemy, uh, on the shores of a frozen lake. Uh, and they have to figure out how to get out of this trap. Um, uh, or they're going to be annihilated. Um, there's something very simple about that kind of narrative arc. And uh, also, it was just a battle that, you know, as I started asking people, friends of mine, people who are pretty knowledgeable uh, about American history, mo very few people seem to know about it. And so I thought, that this is perfect. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to devote some time to, to understanding this battle. Um, the other thing I think that was going on in my head was that um, the Korean War is our forgotten war. You know, it is a war that I think a lot of us have a hard time processing, trying to figure out where does it fit into the scheme of things. Was it a, you know, kind of an aftermath of World War II, or was it a precursor to Vietnam and, and that part of the Cold War? Um, a lot of people don't even think it was a war, uh, you know, that was a police action or it was a... Uh, just some kind of conflict, and we were there to occupy the, the land or something like this. Of course, it was not a declared war. Uh, it was also a war that never, um, it never ended. Uh, there was never a formal treaty that um, resolved all the issues. So it's kind of still hanging. It's still kind of pending. It's, we're still on a war footing um, along the DMZ there in, in Korea. So uh, that was kind of entered my 
thinking, too, is that I wanted to understand this, this war that is kind of, what, how would you describe it? It's kind of like an also-ran, you know, in our public consciousness or something like that. And yet, uh, nearly 2 million Americans served in the Korean War. 34,000 Americans died in the Korean War uh, in just three years. Um, it was a war, and uh, it produced some hellacious battles, uh, some heroic battles, uh, and uh, foremost among those, clearly to me, was the Chosen Reservoir, as I began to look at some of the other battles. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, so that's kind of the background on how I got into this. I, I think the